afternoon, everyone. Um, Doug stole my first uh, few sentences. So I'm Drew. I'm Chief Technology Officer at TT. Uh, uh, TT is in 13 offices globally, and as Doug said, we are the, uh, I'm comfortable saying, we're the leading <laughs> provider of professional futures trading platforms in the world today. We're on every major futures market, uh, but not every single one. Uh, about 45 markets globally. So as the slide says, um, I, I was planning on talking to you about next generation product development, and we have spent the last couple of years uh, working on just that. But as today got closer, uh, I, I was also reminded by a colleague, I had prepared a fairly technical talk. And while I'm sure there's some engineers in the room who may have enjoyed it, um, I, I took a step back because I think the, the diversity of the people here today uh, warrant a, a slightly different take. So instead of talking about next generation product development, I want to talk about how those same principles apply to your career development, what all of you are looking to do uh, in the very near future. So as I said, at, at TT, we spent the last few years building this, this new platform, uh, and in the process, we've learned quite a bit. And, and as it says here, next generation product development requires people who are hungry and demands that you challenge the status quo. And those same principles uh, apply to what you guys are gonna be doing here in the next few years. How are you gonna build a rewarding, exciting career that has an awesome trajectory? It's going to be because you exhibit these two things. Uh, as you get started in your careers and you think about how can you separate yourself uh, from the pack? How can you distinguish yourself from your peers? I can tell you that the number one thing you can do is to prove that you're hungry, to have more drive and hunger than the people around you. Uh, intelligence and technical expertise or experience, uh, they can take you a long way. I'm not trying to downplay that. But inevitably, you're going to bump into people who are smarter than you. There will always be someone as smart or smarter than you, and you have no control over that. The only thing you have control over is do you have more drive, more passion than them? One of the challenges you're going to battle if you want to stay hungry is that you have to resist a sense of entitlement. Everywhere I've worked, in every professional setting I found myself, you bump into people who are entitled. People who think that because of the school they went to, uh, the things on their resume, whatever, they deserve the next opportunity and their opinions are in some way more valuable than others. Uh, entitlement is human nature, but it's dangerous, it's going to be toxic in your career. The world doesn't owe you anything, it doesn't owe me anything. Uh, and even if it did, we'd still be better off if we lived like it didn't. And one of my favorite characteristics of this industry is that it really is a meritocracy. Uh, for some people, getting in can be difficult. You've already beat that, you're, you're here today. Uh, but advancing in this industry is really gonna be based on your character and the hunger you bring to your work. Uh, I'm a living example of that. Uh, my undergraduate degree was in theology. Uh, I didn't have an internship like any of you. I've never taken a course in computer science or engineering. I've never taken a course in any kind of capital markets uh, or trading. Uh, I was given the opportunity to enter this industry because someone saw hunger in me, saw passion in me, and thought that that was what it would take to do the job. So when I was interviewing for my first job uh, in the industry, no one at that firm wanted to hire me. <coughs> I had great interviews, uh, but they looked at the resume and they said, it just hasn't done the things that we really need for this person to have done. But the guy who recruited me, and, and I'll be grateful to him for the rest of my life, he put his reputation on the line, he put his bonus on the line, because he really believed that someone who's passionate and hungry can do far more than anything that they can put on their resume. And what I love about this business is since then, uh, no one really looked at my resume. Uh, obviously when I'd apply for a, a new job or something like that, I would put together a resume and people would look at it. But it was my reputation that preceded me. And your, uh, your career is gonna be defined by your reputation and the character you bring to the work. At TT, as we are still trying to build our team, we think about how to build a team for that next phase of growth and transformation. As Doug said, we just are at the kind of final points of wrapping up this new platform. And we're still looking to grow that team. We still occasionally look for people who have a specific resume. There are some roles where we say, we'd rather this person have done it before. In other words, they, they have the resume. But more and more, we're opening ourselves up to junior talent or less experienced talent, maybe even from outside the industry where we see that hunger, because we're seeing that if you're gonna build that product, you need people who exhibit that. So there's no doubt that my experience tells me that hunger is gonna be the defining thing in you achieving success, but secondarily, you do have to challenge the status quo. 
Uh, what we've been observing at TT over these last couple of years as we've been building this new platform is that if you really want to transform something, a market, an industry, in, in our case, it's the way people access futures trading software, you have to be willing to challenge the status quo, rethink what you thought you knew. We had 22 years of history, and we thought we knew a lot, but we're really trying to rethink all that, and most importantly, be willing to try new things. Uh, and I think the same can be said of building a career, just like building a product. Uh, following the conventional path, working within the bounds of the role you're given over the next couple of years, is a great way to achieve something very average and ordinary. <coughs> but do you want to do something extraordinary? Do you want to be part of something extraordinary? You're going to have to push. You're going to have to challenge the boundaries that are around you. Challenging the status quo can take a few forms. The first one is asking questions, especially the question, why? As you, uh, you enter your careers over these next couple of years, I think you're going to be shocked at how often established organizations can't explain why they do the things that they do. Uh, you're going to be set apart if you're bold enough to ask why frequently. You have to be careful when you do this. You don't want to come across as arrogant, and you don't want to ask why rhetorically as if there is no good reason why. But when you ask why are we doing the things that we do with grace and humility, you prove that you're a thoughtful person and your colleagues and teammates earn respect. But more importantly, you get to learn about that organization. You get to learn how it thinks, how it makes decisions, how it operates. Another way to challenge the status quo is to experiment, uh, to try new things. Uh, this is another one where you have to be careful. You don't want it to look like you've gone rogue and, and working on your own. But at the same time, uh, for example, an, an engineer at TT could have an idea about a product or a new technology to try. And if they take a little bit of time on their own, a night, a weekend, commute, lunch break, or even a little bit of time during their work day to try something new and show some initiative, everybody wins. They bring it back to the team, even if it never goes anywhere near the product. The teams learn something new. That employee has set themselves apart as someone really different, deserving of new opportunities. And they've learned along the way as well. If you're not in a technical or engineering role, it might be a little more difficult to think about what experimentation looks like. But there's always a way, whether it's investigating a new process, a new way of working, a new market or opportunity. There's some way that you can do something on your own to show initiative and motivation. And lastly, maybe the most bold way to challenge the status quo is to speak up and share your opinions. If you're not going to share your opinions early in your career, when will you? When will you be comfortable sharing those opinions? How much knowledge or experience do you have to acquire before you give yourself room to really champion an idea with your colleagues or teammates? Uh, each quarter at TT, I spend uh, a few minutes with everyone who's joined in the previous 90 days in an engineering quality project or product management role. It's a chance for them to get to know me and me to get to know them. And, and for me, the, the biggest thing is just trying to get people's first impressions of the company. I think one of the best ways we can learn about our own company is to have outsiders who come in, tell us what they think after those first few weeks or months. Uh, and in a recent one of those meetings, uh, I had an employee who had, uh, I met him prior to joining, but I hadn't talked to him since he started. And it was his first few weeks, and I'd asked a question about what questions or concerns they had for me. Um, he spoke up, and he said that in those first few weeks, he'd received some assignments, and there was a lack of clarity. There was a, a lack of requirements. Um, that he really needed. And he ended up wasting some time going back and forth, reworking code to try to make up for that deficiency. He, uh, he went to his boss's boss's boss in his first few weeks and called out a lacking that he was saying I needed to address. And it was awesome. Uh, there's not a lot of people who do that in that first meeting, but it was great. And I actually encouraged him to go back and give that same feedback to the team he works with, because they need to hear that as much as I do. Um, but I loved it. We can't get better as organizations if we don't get fresh ideas and opinions from people like you. Uh, I may not always agree with the ideas that come my way, uh, but I would rather debate and discuss those ideas, even if I'm going to eventually disagree with them, than not have the conversation and miss out on the opportunity to talk about how we do what we do. If there's one final thought I'll, I'll share with all of you about challenging the status quo. If you find yourself in an organization or on a team that is uh, annoyed or offended when you ask why, or uh, doesn't understand why you take some time to experiment or take a risk, or doesn't want to hear your ideas or opinions, take that as a sign that it's probably a good time to look for a new opportunity. Uh, the, the, the harsh truth is that life is really short, and in the next 40 years, you will probably spend the majority of your waking hours working in some way. So, 
do it with people who embody these principles, people who are hungry, who push, who ask questions, who are humble enough to say the way we've been doing it might not be the right way. The thing I love about this industry is the people who really succeed embody those principles, and it's part of why I've loved being in it for the last 11 years. So I would challenge you to, to think about your career a little bit like a product. You're building something. You're the product in this case. Um, you've got to show hunger. Let hunger be the thing that sets you apart. Uh, and be sure to challenge the way that things are. Ask why, take risks, uh, speak up, and be bold. Uh, if you do, I think your, your career prospects, the opportunity before you will be radical.